Thanks for joining us for another installment of Anchors Away. We've got a few things we're going to talk about today, taking a look at what is on deck. First thing we're going to talk about is something called the Chico County Massacre. We've got someone here that is well versed on that. Then the cage match, Johnny Cash versus Glenn Campbell. We'll get into that. And the first time Bob tried pot. <laughs> what is that? We'll get to that. Could it just be <laughs> clickbait? You'll have to wait and see. The panel is here. Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan, Mallory Brooks. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Harden. Uh, I um, go by both. And Ashley Katz. <laughs> yeah, right. She answers to both. Guys, how's it going? Did you guys do your homework? I, I didn't know there was good. homework. Oh. Trick question. <laughs> Always. I will never assign homework. Oh, um, thank you. I want to get right into the Chico County Massacre because this, this is a big story. Uh, was a big story. It's Wise kind of it's mm -hmm. a great thing that actually you put together. And basically, at the middle of it, there was a couple of guys that were thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. They were broken out of jail, which really wasn't good for them, because then the next time they were found, a bunch of guys with guns had air hold them in the woods somewhere. Mm. And right. this is part of the Chico County Massacre. And this is a story that you can find on krk.com. That's right. Uh, kind of bring us into how you there are a lot of came twists across in this, this story this is, I mean, just because of the era. I mean, this was after the Civil War, so you have to take yourself back then to there. Slavery had been abolished, yet there were still cotton plantations. People still worked on plantations. This was in Lake Village. A lot of people, you know, drive through there. It is a it's a gorgeous town, in my opinion. Um, really great people there, but there is this hidden history a lot of people don't know about, and it is takes you all the way back to 1871, and that's you know, it was a time when Republicans ruled that area. Mm -hmm. um, African Americans outnumbered whites in that county four to one. So uh, you just have to kind of think about that and then put into perspective what happened. These, these white men murdered a black man in a grocery store, and he was a prominent black man. He was one of the first um, guys to ever like graduate from Howard University Law the, School. So he was a big time farmer? lawyer. He was a well, there are ties. His best friend was the son of the wealthiest planner in Arkansas. Mm. So he was well known. They had all these political connections. And once this happened, he was so upset that his best friend was murdered. They kind of took over the town and there was a lot of fear. A lot of white people in that town left. They, they fled. They were scared for their lives because they broke those three men out of jail, took them out and riddled them with bullets because uh -huh. Um, uh, this was just, it was, they were really upset at the time because this was, this was their friend. But the fact that they were even put in jail in the first place, that normally didn't happen. You, yeah. you don't see three prominent white men go to jail for something like this. So that was unusual in too in the 1800s. 1800s. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different layers to this story and you will not find it in the Arkansas history textbook. I know wow. you've looked through one. Wow. It's been a while since we were in Arkansas history, mm -hmm. but you know, when you're reading about that time period, it is there is no mention of it. Keith's wow. a big history buff. So, no, I had never heard of it, mm. uh, but I know like during the time, um, and I'm not sure if that was post Reconstruction, but it was. I know that um, immediately following the Civil War, you had uh, you know radical Reconstruction. Exactly. Uh, and that was the the time that uh, President Johnson had been impeached not convicted, but um, because he disagreed with how radical the Reconstruction folks were. Um, but maybe it needed to be that way because there was a lot of still underlying mm -hmm. hatred of black Americans who had just been freed. So, right. um, you know, of course, once the Democrats lost control after the Civil War, the Republicans basically made sure that laws were followed and that civil mm -hmm. rights were protected at that time. And that's why these guys ended up in jail, you mm -hmm. know. And that's probably something that wouldn't have happened. It would not have happened uh, probably back, you know, yeah. uh, in in the, the Confederacy mm -hmm. or even pre-Confederacy mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the you know the the slavery de slavery Democrats were were running the show. Exactly. And well, this is a story that is it's already on our website. You can that's watch right. it right now. You can watch mm -hmm. it on demand anytime. So just search Chico County. It should be the first story that pops this up. This is and this is another. You, this is. You keep coming up with some of these stories well, where you yeah, the, way back. The person who came up you know. with this story, it's so interesting, it's Vincent Tolliver, and if you recognize mm -hmm. that name, uh -huh. he ran for mayor of Little Rock. He's from Lake Village and just stumbled across it five years ago. Just like a lot of people in this state, um, this is all, you know, history, but people are just now learning about it, which is so fascinating. Well, you do a great job with these stories, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to, to checking that mm -hmm. out. But, yeah, that's one of the stories you can find at krk.com. Take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about Johnny Cash and Glenn Campbell, and just exactly why we're talking about them. For one reason, um, there's some movement trying to get some statues changed at the U.S. Capitol that represent Arkansas. Currently, it's James Clark. He was the 18th governor. We'll get to Johnny Cash in a second. And Uriah Milton Rose, who was U.S. ambassador, both from Arkansas, but then um, 
decided that they would represent Arkansas in the U.S. Capitol. Well, then there was a push uh, to put a statue of Daisy Bates, hmm. who was a civil rights icon here, and Johnny Cash to represent. What do you guys think about that? That's we'll get to John, Johnny uh, Glenn Campbell in a second. I think it's wonderful. Daisy Bates, Johnny Cash. I think that's great. Two well-known uh, names. I mean, yes. definitely, when you think of Arkansas, that may not be the first person mm -hmm. I think of, but... I would lobby for Glenn Campbell, mm. only because Glenn Cam I mean, Johnny Cash, uh, I'm not going to mm. diss any Cash fans out there, um, great, but Glenn Campbell was always more of a promoter of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time yes. he had a show, he would have his parents on, he would have his family on, mm -hmm. he'd talk about being from Delight and what a great place Delight. it was, mm -hmm. Delight. <laughs> um, you know, and I spent time, I did a story on... on uh, uh, Glenn Campbell spent some time with his family. They're still very active uh, mm -hmm. in Delight. Um, his uh, nephew, Steve, they have a music festival every year um, that raises money for Alzheimer's, raises money for the community. But I think Johnny, or Glenn Campbell statue mm -hmm. should be at the U.S. Capitol. That would be a great way to honor him. Yes. A great way to, to, get to that honor done. his love of Arkansas. Uh -huh. Exactly. Absolutely. You know? And it continue, I mean, his family still, you know, they're still here. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't move away. And, uh, right. you know, I, I just, that was just kind of my... I, like throw it. That in there. I love that. I saw Glenn Campbell in 1993 in Branson. Oh, he was performing awesome. in Branson, yes. and he was amazing. And he took the time to meet everybody afterwards. So I, I got to go up and get his autograph. And of course, oh, I was wow. so starstruck. I was that? in oh, elementary oh, school, and yes. I was just. He was the kindest man. And I was so excited to tell him I'm from Arkansas. And of course, you know, his face lights up because he loves yeah. Arkansas so much. So you're right. He he deserves to be to be honored. And here. that music festival, it was held in September. So if you get the opportunity to head to Delight when they have mm -hmm. that and uh, you'll see Delight. <laughs> I know uh, I'm going to get in trouble for that, but uh, you'll see me there. OK, here's one <laughs> call it clickbait or you know, or not, because this week um, people will be getting their cards for medical marijuana in the state of Arkansas, essentially meaning that they are now allowed to possess medical marijuana. It will, may not be in the state until probably later in the summer, depending upon when cultivation mm -hmm. and dispensaries get all lined up. Um, on that note, and the headline was, first time trying pot. Um, me and a couple of friends were sitting around, listening to Pink Floyd, and a friend says, hey, have you ever? No, that's obviously not the way this goes. <laughs> uh, I was in Colorado, and um, I like, Keith, I, I've, got sh I've got shoulder <laughs> problems. And, uh, Keith's familiar. We, we kind of both have some shoulder issues. Mm -hmm. And a uh, family member said, hey, um, you should put this on your shoulder. And it was medical marijuana. Uh -huh. And it was, uh, you know, it's like, kind of like a cream type thing. And I said, well, I, I, okay. And, and I did, and it worked. So I'm not, I'm not endorsing or, or one way or the other, but it was something that actually worked. And I think it would be, it, I think we'll find a lot of benefits for folks, a lot of relief mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. they start using medical marijuana, you know, in their particular right. ailment, whatever it may be. It'll be interesting to see what it also does for the economy. It's yes, I mean, absolutely. So many promises have been made, so much mm -hmm. research has been done, but to see how it actually goes over in Arkansas, I think it's that will be the story. I think it's going to follow. I, I think it's one of those things. It's going to be kind of neat to see exactly also how it's managed, mm -hmm. you know. and yes. regulated, and you know, law enforcement. Mm -hmm. How they're well, going that's to, whole, uh, you know, that's, that, mm -hmm. that's going to be something to. It's well, watch. Keto, you, you're you a fan one way or the other. You're kind of um, quiet on the uh, issue. I mean, I'm always, and, and and it's always been my concern, even when it popped mm -hmm. up in Colorado and, and other states, when they start with medical marijuana, and then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's like, "Hey, this is great." Now we move to recreational marijuana. That's something right. that I, I would not promote. No, I, I mean I don't know. I, I don't want to tell. You know, I'm kind of part libertarian, and I think you know, government should kind of get out of the business of being over us all the time. On the other hand, I don't want high people driving around. Mm -hmm. and, right. and the thing to me that is the most hypocritical, and, and it was on our news uh, last week, people are saying what a terrible job we're doing in discouraging smoking cigarettes. Yet here we are encouraging smoking marijuana. Right. That's, that's unusual. If that's, now, I, I'm, now, if I mean, that's the medical application. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. that's the medical application. So yeah. you, you can't have it both ways. And I know th there was this little meme, mem, that there's this guy smoking over here in the distance. And this guy says he's either uh, an, an a-hole cigarette smoker or a cool pot smoker. Right. So, I mean, mm. I, I don't know. It's kind of a quandary. You know, how, how can we sit here and say smoking is bad yet encouraging people to mm -hmm. smoke marijuana? Mm -hmm. well, and hopefully Not encouraging, but right. kind of saying it's okay. 
Now, they're, they're, I'm sure, and I don't know for sure, you have experience obviously, but I'm sure there are practical applications that don't need to be inhaled. If you want yeah. to, go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> but don't, don't fake it and say, oh, it's not bad for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you know, you're still inhaling something. Um, you know, whether it's paint fumes, and tobacco smoke, marijuana smoke. Uh, do whatever you want. And on the libertarian side of me, I'm saying that's fine. But don't, like, make it into something it's not. Exactly. You know, if there's a strictly medical use, let's put it in a cream or a pill. Which and is, the, you know, that's what mm -hmm. I didn't smoke it. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. Or just, just let's, let's come off of this fakery of, ooh, it's medical, and just say, okay, let's just go recreational and just be done with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, I mean, well, it's I wonder kind what, of what element do you think these guys are selling? <laughs> Interesting video choice there. Uh, Hopefully it's regulated. Probably nothing at this point. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> it's regulated and uh, the people who, who truly need it. You know, you see a, a child with cancer, or an elderly person with cancer, well, exactly, having chemotherapy yeah. who cannot control how much they are sick and throwing mm -hmm. up and in pain. And, mm -hmm. and if this can help them, then more power, give them anything that makes mm -hmm. them feel better. And hopefully it's regulated yeah. then where someone who just wants to, you know, say I have a headache and- Be responsible. Um, with that. Yet on the other hand, mm -hmm. we're cracking down on opioids, mm -hmm. morphine, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a tough question, and I'll say, granted, it's a tough it's a tough question. Again, do what you want, but the second it it becomes a danger to me and my family, and that goes for alcohol too. Alcohol yeah. kills far more people mm -hmm. per year, mm -hmm. and I'll admit that. But I don't think we have enough of a track record in looking at, especially Colorado, to say people are high in driving. I mean, well, just there, don't I, if do you talk it in to your law enforcement too, they'll say, no, the vehicle accidents are caused because people have smoked too much marijuana and got yeah. in the car. I mean, do your thing, but don't jeopardize other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, don't get in a car. And that goes for drinking too, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Don't get in a car. Any I mean, you want to have a good time. Thing. You know, I watch Live PD on A&E, and, and it's kind of a fun show. <laughs> Having been former law enforcement, I could never do it today. I'll tell I you. give law enforcement. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh. you guys, so you guys out there are fantastic. I don't know how you deal with some of these people out there. But so many people, they pull over and they've been smoking in their car, smoking pot. Right. Um, and, and to me, that's just incredulous. How can you put somebody at risk? I mean, do like I said, do what you want to do, but do it in a safe place so you're not mm -hmm. endangering other people. Right. You know, that, that's all I'm saying. On right. the medical marijuana note, too, this is a story that I'm sure my mom, I don't know if she'd see this, but wouldn't mind sharing, that she has back problems mm -hmm. and lives in Colorado. And one of my nieces says, you know, hey, Grammy, you should try this brownie. <laughs> And it was, yes. and she told her what it was before, and so they cut her off just a little piece and said, "Here, you know, go, you know, just try this, sit down, relax, uh, watch Game Show Network, whatever it was, <laughs> and, um, and see how you feel." So oh. time goes, you know, day passes on, and someone goes, "Hey, where's, where's the rest of that brownie?" <laughs> and they go to my mom. They said, "Where did you put it up somewhere?" She said, "I ate it." Oh, Grammy was yeah, feeling good. Yeah, she ate the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you weren't, you weren't supposed to eat that much. It's just a little bit. And she's like, oh, well, I, you know, she has a sweet tooth. And there it goes. And, you know, I asked my mom, like, how to work out. And she said it was horrible. She says, I was up all night checking windows and looking, oh. making sure oh. doors locked, looking under the bed. She got, like, all kinds of paranoid. Oh, no. So Her skin was do, probably crawling. I'm never going to do that again. Oh, you know, no. How'd your back feel? She goes, I didn't even know I had a back. <laughs> right. Well, so it but, solved that problem then. Solved the back problem. At any rate. All right, guys. Well, thanks very much. Great conversation this time around. I want to thank you very much for checking in for, for uh, this week's Anchors Away. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.